Hello, this is Paul Kyler with PK Perfumes. We're going to start a little series on perfumer training, uh, part of my classing classes that I'm teaching. And uh, this is a little video on crystals, crystallization, using crystals in your perfume concentrate. So pick up a little cup of tea and enjoy your presentation. We're uh, right here at the lab table with the racks of materials right behind us. They are uh, kind of cram-packed with bottles and things, and uh, even the huge bottles here, which uh, I haven't found quite enough space yet to hold them. So we have to do a little more work and get a little more organized and get these racks a little better utilized than they are presently. So, um, we're at the table here, and we're going to talk about the crystals and things. And I'm going to turn this around so I can see it better. I guess I haven't figured out how to swap the self view to the face out view. So, uh, we're on the lab table, the stainless steel lab table. It was a, a sandwich prep table that I bought uh, from a business that was... Uh, liquidating their their stock and I don't think I paid uh, about $150 for a really nice stainless steel sandwich prep table. But this is where I do all of my chemistry work and uh, mixing anything that uh, could be wet and hot and acidic or something, you know, this is where the stuff happens. So to start with, we're going to talk about the common materials that are crystalline in our naturals. So the, uh, the Texas cedar, uh, this is Texas cedar wood oil, and it does not have any crystalline material in the bottom. You can see it's clear. I like these beautiful bottles here. I've got this uh, nice marking there for uh, quantity, but... If you look at the bottom of this bottle, you can see some recrystallization happening with the sea drawl in it. Sea drawl is a crystalline material. Now, this bottle I have recently melted and blended again with the um, with the little stirring rods uh, on the on the stirring mixer, but uh, that wasn't just maybe a week ago, but it's already started to recrystallize. So we uh, just need to keep an eye on that. And I like these clear bottles because I can keep an eye on them. And it tells me that uh, I need, get it focused there. I need to pay attention to that when I can see it in there. And there's a lot more than that. I'm not really gonna worry about it right now. Um, but cedrol is a solid. You can see it, this here. This is Texas cedar wood origin. They call it liquid seed, cedrol, liquid cedrol. And it is 68% cedrol crystals. And oh my gosh, it is like, it is like the thickest goop here. because it's mostly solids. It's 68% solid crystalline material. So that's why you have to uh, keep the regular cedar, cedar wood oil and other oils, you have to pay attention. Another, another common solid is vanillin, ethyl vanillin, and uh, so those you need to pay attention to. Another one is the, some of the musks. This is musk ketone. So solubility is part of the issue. The, uh, the old first edition Old Spice, Old Spice Cologne. Uh, my perfumer friend David Ruskin tells me that when this was first made, they tried to put as much musk ketone as possible 
into Old Spice. And so they could only put as much as was soluble because it started to fall out of solution and recrystallize uh, like the cedar is doing. So they could, you know, they reached the saturation point and they had to, you know, back off. And that was all they could put in there. But they loved musketone in original Old Spice. Uh, another natural that uh, has uh, crystalline materials is uh, patchouli. Patchouli oil. This is from Perfumer's Supply House. This is the patchouli oil. 65% patchouli. Come on, focus. There we go. 65% patchouli. Now, I've got it on the heater right now. Actually, it's warm um, because I'm trying to remelt the patchouli in there. But patchouli is a, a little white crystal with, uh, you know, it's just white in there and... You know, it doesn't come out. It's a, it's a solid, and it's kind of caked up in there. But um, when you've got a material that is 68% cedrol or 65% patchoulol crystal concentrate uh, con content in there, uh, there's a high probability that it's going to be recrystallizing. So um, storing them in clear bottles is a great solution so that you can monitor how much they have recrystallized and if you need to uh, do some work to maintain their homogeneity. So I have this um, set at 188 degrees Fahrenheit, 87 degrees Celsius. It's not that hot. It's just uh, warming up the fluid to melt the crystalline structure that's in there. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about the use of powders in your blends. Since uh, I have so many bottles on my shelf, I'm not really keen to keep multiplying them. I just need more space and more space and that's a problem. So I, uh, I also don't normally blend my concentrates diluted unless it's a highly powerful very strong material or really thick liquid like uh, an absolute or something I don't normally dilute anything um, so when I make my concentrates and when I'm blending my trials and my actual concentrates for production I don't dilute the powders I put them straight in to the, the beaker I just put them right into the beaker. I do them at the start. I put the solids in first. You always put dry down first and wet into dry, if you know anything from the kitchen. You always put wet into dry. So I put the powders in first, and um, many times, most of the powders are dissolved by the time I get through the compound blend, if I'm making a large amount. And... Um, so I just put them in, and even if uh, that's hot, <laughs> even if I need to uh, um, spend a little time on the blender here with the stirring rod, uh, you know that's fine with me. Um, I don't I don't normally pre dilute any of my crystals. So that's uh, what I wanted to say today about uh, crystallines and recrystallization and homogeneity. Just to to be aware that these things could happen and take care of it uh, before you uh, use them. All right, thanks. Have a great day and keep it smelly.